Hey everybody, welcome back. I'm Emily Moyer and this is the first official episode of Strange Mosaic. I did one episode with Darren Williams that I decided, oh, that sort of matches the, the show concept that I'm sort of trying to roll out. So I titled it that, but there hasn't, and, and I did a segment with John Brisson that fit that as well, but this is the first show that like, I have like a, a header for and it looks like it and everything. And I figured Shane Bales would be the perfect guest for this because what I'm kind of envisioning going forward forward a little different than what I used to do on Off Planet Radio with Randy is this well will sometimes be topic driven about the person I'm interviewing's work. There'll be a segment about that. I'm also just curious about these people as thinkers and what they think about all the things going on in the world in general, not just the particular topic that they're specifically known for having written a book about or made a series of videos about or whatever. I'm really interested in more the way they think about other things as well. So the show concept I'm kind of rolling out here is this strange mosaic because we are living in a very weird sort of patchwork quilted mosaic tiled reality that seems to have been put together by a brilliant if messy editor. <laughs> 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 and so that's kind of where we're going. So Shane Bales is here uh, with me and we're going to have a conversation about I have no idea what and I'll tell you guys why in a second. But before we roll into that, um, if you are watching this on the Off Planet Media YouTube channel, please also go and subscribe to my personal YouTube channel, which is Emily Moyer. Some of my work will continue uh, to appear on Off Planet Media, but all of my work is available over at Off Planet uh, at Emily Moyer YouTube channel, and all the shows will be there first before they end up anywhere else. So please go over and subscribe there. And now we're going to move into the show. So Shane, you know, <clears throat> I don't. I, I don't listen, oftentimes when I'm going to interview somebody, I don't necessarily listen to anything that they've done super recently with other people because I don't want it to influence what I'm going to, what, what we're going to do. But in this case, I did listen to most of the episode you just did with Jerry and Nish on Obelisk because, A, because I think they're, they're, they're awesome and they're brilliant, but B, because we do have a lot of similar audience and I don't want to just replicate the same show, which <laughs> if I don't listen to what they've done, there's more of a chance that that will happen than if I do listen to what they've done. Yeah. <laughs> but actually, I think they're coming at things from, I don't know, not necessarily want to say a neutral space, and I do recommend everybody go listen to that episode of The Obelisk because it was great. Um, but they're like, they don't need to have their guest like fall into their, their, the way that they view the world. They view the world differently than one another. And they're not necessarily looking for agreement for the sake of agreement. Maybe there's areas where, okay, we coincide in how we think about something, but they're not looking, they're not looking for that. So they're able to give you a really good neutral conversation. And it was really the first time I'd say not ever, but in a long time, you know, I've heard you interviewed from a, that place. So you're, at, I could actually get to know sort of the contents of your mind and how you think about all this stuff going on, as opposed to you, you using your nom, your the, all the knowledge and information you have, which is plentiful to accommodate somebody else's view of reality. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so it was really interesting to listen to it, and I thought, wow, like. I actually, um, I found myself in, in agreement or at least in sync with you in terms of not necessarily the exact way something is, but the way you, the way you view the world, the way you've obviously largely been trained to, you know, from your life experiences to understand the bigger picture, but also because of the perspective that you have as an artist or really creative person, the way you look at things. And I felt like this and I was very surprised at this. This might be the person closest that I've heard to my own way that I view reality, like not necessarily in terms of I agree with this or I like this, but like when I'm looking at things, the way I put my puzzle sort of together. And I was really surprised about that because our personalities are quite different. I'm fairly extra, very extroverted and chatty and all that kind of stuff. And you're more introverted except for when you're involved in artistic expression. So I was kind of surprised. I was listening to this this morning as I was exercising and I was like, wow, I'm really looking forward to this conversation because you and I have talked a lot personally, but it's always been more about like personal issues. We've done a show or two together, but I hadn't really realized that like just your perceptor of the world in terms of how things work is pretty similar to mine. I was kind of surprised to find that. So um, I'm really excited for, for this and to just kind of hear some more of that 
because I feel like um, your perception in the alternative media has been more framed by the people who interviewed you and what their, <laughs> their requirements are than, than by who you actually are and the way you see things. So I'm looking forward to this. So welcome, Shane. <laughs> Thank you. It's, uh, I didn't know it was the first. It's uh, an honor to be the first. It's pretty awesome. Um, yeah, I've been kind of just hanging out. Uh, haven't been doing much of the, I, I was keeping up with the weekly live streams, actually doing two a week, but I've kind of fallen off of that just because it's too nice outside and um, it's a lot nicer to be out there than it is to be in here a lot of the time. So I get wandering and then forget to plan anything and then nothing happens. So. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's good to know that reality works the same for you, that your magical powers aren't so much greater than ours that you can forget to do something and it still happens anyway, right? Yeah. <laughs> That's right. I, uh, it's not necessarily like I'm avoiding doing it. I just haven't felt like it. It's, um, I'm kind of in a place right now where I'm, I'm following my in intuition, if you will, my own internal guidance as to where I'm supposed to be, what I'm supposed to be doing each day. Got a few uh, routines that I keep up on, of course, but other than that, um, and a lot of that has a lot to do with, you know, mama or mother earth, whatever you want to call her, and uh, just kind of this balancing act that she's trying to do and looking for a lot of us to try and help, I guess, on an energetic level. So um, wherever she wants me to go, that's where I've been going and that's what I've been doing. That's awesome. Yeah, no, that, that has been an interesting, it did seem to kind of coincide with when uh, crazy got ramped up in the external world that suddenly also, and, and we can get into some of this as well, um, our attention was redirected also a little bit to nature and nature seems to be showing us something. And so I think doing what you're doing right now is important and, um, you know, we've been observant of some of the different the changes and some of the things that I don't know if something changed or if we just didn't notice some of these things before because we were so caught up in our usual day-to-day -day routine and this was you know a disruption for everybody um, but I think it's often like what you said you know you were into the routine of doing the live streams and stuff for a bit and then you've been led to do something else I think it's really important for people like us and particularly a person like you who's super create creativity based like that is was one of the elements of our childhoods that right like they put us up to doing these things that like they wanted us to do or that they thought we were good at and we may have been and we may have even enjoyed them at certain times but then it became expected that we do that all the time and we can very easily fall into that and ignore our own like needs for what our creative desires are, but also that um, that connection to earth and nature, which is something real, which is very different than the reality that was being set in place for us through projects and whatnot. And so I think that's great that you don't feel required to do something just because you were doing it up to that point. <laughs> yeah, I, I've, I've always kind of been, that's my personality. Um... Part of why I became the ruiner in the first place, I suppose, is just I, I, I'm not going to listen to you just for the sake of listening to you. I'm not going to agree with you just for the sake of agreeing with you. Um, I can separate, you know, how I feel about things from what they are. And um, it, it makes it a lot easier to just not do things or walk away from things or not let things bother me, I suppose, is uh, the best way to say it. Yeah. So you're, you're in Toronto. What is the weather like there right now? Are you guys having a nice summer? What is the oh, weather like? in the summer is it humid or is it nice well pretty much all in canada we have like really nice summers like it gets really hot and it's nice it's uh humidity can get up in the city usually but uh because i think partially because of the lockdown a lot less traffic it's not as bad this year um last couple of weeks have been like very very hot a lot of sun uh no rain so i think we're a little overdue i hear just north of me there's uh some sun thunderstorms coming our way so hopefully we get those because i could use some of them Summer but, right. uh, <laughs> but uh yeah i mean um interesting time because obviously we're in the middle of all this covid stuff and the lockdown and i'm in a major city so like the the mask mandate just came in today as example and i saw lots of people still walking into all the stores without them and being like whatever you know like uh 
it's 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 been kind of interesting to see people not really care around here to be honest um we go to the beach on any given day it's packed uh even the police are kind of just looking at it and being like mm, meh. you know so uh a b- big difference from the states and you know i was talking to my friend grant over in australia this morning and it doesn't sound like it's very nice over there which is probably a sign of things to come for us here in canada but uh for now I think they're going to give us the, the rest of July and probably August as a nice little cushion and then drop us back into another lockdown in the fall for whatever reason they come up with. <laughs> right. So that's kind of, so that's kind of interesting. I, like, I would have thought because of the way, and again, the way we are, the, the way Canada is presented to us in the United States is not necessarily accurate, right? Um, but like, my perception of Canada is that it's a little bit more, tends a little bit more towards obedience in general, um, than America, maybe not all strains. Like it's weird. Like the obedience here is this like weird leftist authorita- authoritarian to be against the right kind of thing, not because mm-hmm. of the obedience of the people. It's a different. It's obedience for a different reason. Um, but I guess you know. So I guess I would have thought that like uh, maybe. Mm, the mask thing would have been pretty well adhered to there. There was somebody in our little health chat group yesterday who's from Quebec and she's like yeah Quebec is kind of a little bit more you know rebellious or whatever they're not really doing it or wanting to do it but she was thinking that some of the other provinces might be so that's interesting that you're saying yeah people are like whatever that that that's nice that's good I like that (laughs) Canadians kind of operate where it's like it's not necessarily that they're obeying because they've been told they like you know we're stereotypically very nice right so we hear you know they can play on our own morality of like don't get other people sick you might be a carrier and people wear them for that reason and and don't question so it's not necessarily that we're obedient we're just kind of naive a lot of the time and and don't really question things and that that can work both ways where you know uh we just don't listen to what the authorities are saying or whatever and just live our lives however we feel fit and in most of our communities you can kind of get away with that so what has there been a lot of cases in Canada that's not I haven't I, I come to think of it I can't think I mean I don't pay a lot of um attention to like reading all of the news like I'll do and you know I was kind of listening to you talk with Nish and Jerry about like you know the, what I pay attention to is the outliers that are hidden like there'll be like 20 COVID case stories about like oh my god the cases are going up here here and there blah 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 and then there'll be one somewhere here a monkey runs out of lab with samples you know what I mean like kind of like what you guys were talking about so I, I look at the front page and just try and weave together what I think is going on but I can't remember seeing very many articles about Canada as being any kind of hotbed for this in any way is what's what is going on there we had a couple things where there was like outbreaks in an old age home that were kind of big that got everyone's attention but if you really kind of look at like again i'm in toronto biggest city in canada we've got next to nothing i think they just said that ontario uh, recorded zero new cases for the month of may um (laughs) <laughs> or I don't know, the month of July, June, sorry. The one that we just passed. <laughs> um, and so, I mean, I don't know. I, I think that we're not as prone to lying about our numbers as well. <laughs> um, we have socialized health care, so they're not as incentivized to, you know, sell drugs or, or anything here in the same ways. Uh, not to say that they're not, but it just is not in the same way. So I don't think we you know, uh, showed as many cases for that reason. Yeah. And I, I, I don't know, general feeling on it aside, I think that it's just, like we, because we're pretty much our whole co- country ha- it has a Northern climate, right? Like we have winter, we have all four seasons. We're used to the seasonal flus and we're used to the seasonal colds. And I think our bodies are a little bit more accustomed to dealing with it. Whereas like say Southern states and stuff where they don't get that quite as frequently might get hit by harder from it and have more uh, hospital visits because of it. Like most people around here, when we get sick, we don't go to the hospital. We don't go to a doctor. We just ride it out and that's it. So I've met lots of people who said, you know, right around the time this all came out, they were already sick and they got better, but, you know, never bothered getting tested or anything like that. So I think it's a a combination of things. Politically, we just kind of do whatever the states tells us to do anyway, so it doesn't even really matter where our 
case numbers are. If the states is like locked down, we'll probably lock down, which is I think what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. uh, you guys have already started, right? Like Florida, I heard, and California have already gone back for their second wave lockdown. I'd imagine over the next two months, there'll be the rest of you, and then we'll do the same thing. See whatever they roll out next, uh, which I mean, I think it's kind of anyone's guess at this point because the way they operate, obviously, the more we talk about things, the least, less likely they are to actually do them. So if we're like calling for, you know, an arbitrary example of false flag alien invasion, they're definitely not going to do that because we've been talking about it for the last six months, right? Yeah. So it, whatever they are going to do, it's going to end up being something that we're not talking about. Maybe something as ridiculous as what they're trying to do now with the new strain of H1N1 or the bluebonic plague uh, surfacing in China, things like that. But. I do think that they, so like this has been an incredibly interesting exercise, of course, because it, that's all, that's what it is, exercise, right? But I do think what they have figured out is that the threat to personal health seems to scare people more than the threat of terrorism or school shooters or even possibly alien invasion, right? Like it feels like, um, you know, it feels like for some reason, like I feel like they kind of would have preferred the event to be one of the other things, right? For some reason, but those yeah. weren't really going that well. And, and so I agree with your assessment that like some of the things that they wanted to do weren't really working and time-wise they just ended up, oh, like, we need to do this, but it's okay. It can also be like a test run for the thing we're really gonna do sort of later. I think they figuring out how, how compliant people will be for how long. And, uh, you know, um, I think it's possible that a reason that they haven't had to be so intense with it in Canada also is for what you were saying about the seasons, right? If the big event is really gonna come in the fall or into the winter, like it's cold where you guys are anyway, it's not gonna be challenging to keep people yeah. inside and whatnot. Whereas here we have a variety of different climates, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and, so, and, and people don't like, the the city living in um, Toronto is, or in place in the bigger cities in Canada is closer to like the city living of the East Coast, whereas in the United States there's a lot of cities where it's still everybody lives in their own separate house and this and that. Yeah, and it's, a, it's just a different kind of it's a different kind of environment. And like you said, with the United States too, it's a Canada just kind of goes along with it, so they don't have to like it's the it's the united states that really needs to be brought to heel right like you know that that's where the big challenge is um and you know we have a different your your province has fallen more into lockstep i think with what uh the i don't know how you guys refer to it as the federal government like we, what we have here your parliament your national yeah. or whatever it is right with the exception that i know that quebec is sometimes intentionally obtuse right um <laughs> <laughs> they want they want to be their own little country they've tried to leave a few times i think <laughs> yeah. so, um you know so so that's kind of interesting um there's there's a lot of things going on here right like and i do i think what you're saying is right though like i already think they had to move up the second wave because we talked so much about okay so the second wave is going to be in the fall so that's really the one you need to be prepared for and this that and the other thing so then they're like fuck and we're not going to be able to surprise them with our second wave. So we just have to like let the second wave fold right out of the first wave now. And it's kind yeah. of, it's weird what's how it is here. Like, you know, they locked down really heavily in like New York and California and all the liberal stronghold coastal cities and states and stuff. And then now like, so, and they didn't so much in the interior of the country. And then now it's kind of reversed. Like here things, even though they keep saying they're, doing stricter lockdowns, it's a lot more open here than it was when we were in Arizona last week. And we had been in Arizona the month before and it had been very open and free. And now Arizona is like how it was here and back in March. And so it, it's just kind of weird, this, you know, I think the bigger message I'm getting it from, from it is you're not, there's no place to go for freedom, right? There's not, you can't no. <laughs> and hope that it's going to be better. Or if you do, it will be for a little bit and that was just kind of a trick and that, you know, whatever. And then you're in this new state it doesn't have your same support system and you moved there because you thought they were going to be free. And so now you're under tyranny with none of your friends around. Yeah. <laughs> what I mean? like, it's just, yeah. Yeah. It, 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 it's a muck muck. Um, do you think like, do you, I mean, are, my guess is just going to be that you're kind of like me on this is that like, there is both a virus and not a virus. <laughs> right. 
<laughs> yeah, I mean, I think they, they released it so that it's there in some form. But I don't think it's, you know, what's causing a lot of people to get sick. If anybody's really even getting sick, you know, it's, uh, I think it just, it started as what it is. And now they're just using it whenever they feel like it, throwing yeah. it at stuff. Like uh, Toronto Public Health got called out on Twitter recently about inflating the numbers and flat out admitted that, yeah, that's what we do. Every, every case is a COVID case because we don't know how to determine it. We, we're not testing everybody. So we're just calling it COVID. Like, oh, okay. <laughs> so that, how many of our cases were actually COVID that, oh, we don't know. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, that, that could be none. You know what I mean? It could be none. It could be three. It could be four. It could be none. So yeah, they're, they're getting us ready for something. Um, you're right in what you said about like, you know, big part of what's going on timing wise with us is just based on our seasons, right? It's summertime. They know that if we're going to fight it all to get out of our houses, it's going to be right now. But they also know Canadians well enough to know that, you know, if it's winter time and they're like, just stay home, we're like, okay, we were going to do that anyways. Right. So, and Canada has done an amazing job and, and I, I don't know if we've talked about it, but you know, just how quick they rolled all of this out. It was, it was quite clear that they were ready for it, right? Like we got our government assistance, like literally within a, the first couple of weeks, um, we were like two weeks behind and then they were throwing $2,000 in our bank account, right? And it's the most simple process going in through your CRA account, which is our version of the IRS and um, signing up for it. And three days later, it's in your bank account. No questions asked, really. We might get some questions later. But that's because they don't know or they can't tell us how long this is going to go on, right? So, you get this money every month? Yeah. So it started off as being like, oh, we're going to do this up until July, right? And then they told it that's because the narrative at the time was everything was going to go back to normal at July. But now July is here and we're not back to normal. So they just extended it another two months. <clears throat> and then what happens in September when they lock us down again, they just have to keep extending and then at some point in time, they're just going to have to go, well, um, all right, well, here's universal basic income. We kind of wanted it anyways, because here in our country, like we have one of our parties, our NDP party has been pushing for it anyways. Um, we kind of wanted it anyways. So now that it's here, we might as well just let it roll and everything will be restructured. And in terms of why I think it's hitting the states the way it is, it comes into everything I wrote into the blog about, you know, that's kind of been the New World Order's home for a really long time now like pretty much since it, that's what it was founded for really and all this idea of patriotism and everything that they've they've taught is, has all been so so that they could build this up and make it fall really hard because if you want something to fall really hard you got to build it up really high yeah. and and they were intentionally going to make the new Rome which is the United States fall at some point in time so that they could rebuild their ultimate dream of a new Babylon right yeah cycles and here we go again and so I've been saying pretty much since I've been speaking that that's Canada and the reason why you haven't heard anything about Canada and the reason why we, we seem so, you know, don't worry about them. There, there's nothing going on up there is because everything's been going on up here. They've been preparing for it. They've been building for it. And right now we're seeing it all across our city where they're tearing down these old buildings and they're putting up these new buildings all while we're in a lockdown all for why. And, you know, building over top of ancient buildings, like buildings that have been there for hundreds of years with these new megaplex buildings that who knows what's going on underneath them, right? So um, I said all of that. It was funny because I, I used the word Babylon and then tell us the, the communications company yeah. drops uh, this new health app because you can't just go to your doctors anymore, right? Yeah. You're, doing, yeah. you're doing everything over the phone now. So this new health app, app that's coming out in Canada through TELUS started in Ontario, which I've been saying is the capital of, of this starts in Ontario. And what do they call it? They call it Babylon. Yeah. <laughs> Almost like they heard me say it and were, or maybe I knew what they were planning on doing, but it's, it started and I've been watching it. That's why I've been wandering around so much. I've been watching all of this building happen and all these repurposes of buildings. Um, all part of the digital burning process, all part of building a, a new center for, the new world as it will be. And um, I guess we're all along for the ride. So a couple of things. So I want to go to this uh, so plainly them putting things out in plain sight, right? Like, like we're literally, they're calling it, they're telling us that it's Babylon, right? Like I want to get into some of that because there's been a lot of that and it, it like 
And so I would like to talk about that. I would also like to talk about some of this uh, digital burning and, and this sort of destruction of buildings and whatnot. But I just quickly want to go back to, um, real quickly, with some of what these obvious rules and mandates and stuff have been during the time of this and some sort of alternative perspective on some of it. I heard you get into like touching on some of that with Jerry and Nish, but the, I wanted to kind of go maybe one step farther on some of that with you. So like obviously like there's been this simultaneous rollout of 5G and I totally agree with your um, assertion that like, no, it's not, we have to be careful. 5G does not cause coronavirus or, or COVID-19 or whatever, but the set of, you know, like basically the people who are not dealing well with the more electrified, with the change in the, the terraforming, as you called it, right, are more susceptible to a variety of things. And since there is no clear picture of exactly what COVID is, they can just do like what you said and call it that and whatnot. But the other thing that's been really interesting so there's two things that have become uh, uh, a religion in the past four months, which is mask wearing and social distancing, right? Like this is something that had not been present in Western life um, before. And now it's like the accepted norm, the religion, and you are some kind of an outlier or aberrant in some way if you don't do that. Right? And so like the mask thing, you know, uh, you, you talked about that, like part of it is just, I, that was my first assessment is the whole mask thing is about both. My first thought was the, the mask thing and the social distancing were about upgrading their facial recognition software, about recalibrating to be, to be able to know more with less, right? Like that's the whole purpose of all of their technology is to find out as much stuff they're not supposed to know as they can with as little information that they're allowed to really allowed to have as possible. Right, like make the most of the least amount. So if they can recognize somebody from just quite literally this up here, and as you said, they've been doing it for a while, right? But I think they're deploying that technology massively now in yeah. spaces that it hasn't been before. And in order to make, make sure they're getting accuracy, they need less people on the streets, right? To make sure that that stuff is, that they're actually seeing what they're seeing. Am I correct about that? Yeah, that's it. It's, uh, you know, rolling out the technology in such a way where they can test it as they go, um, keeping us separated. Again, that being able to just the eyes. And then the other thing is the biometric systems, like the, the temperature stations and all of this thing where you're going in and you're putting it, even the swabs and the DNA information we're giving them all, it's all being fed into these supercomputers that are tracking us through, you know, the Google, Google Brain or whatever they call that, Google Mind, I think it is, um, the iCloud, uh, these different things, it, they've all been feeding all that information back to these computers that we don't know about for a long time that's compiling all these informations for tracking purposes and, and various other things. I mean, now, and we have them in our Walmarts, they're biometric cameras that you go in and it's taking your temperature. It's getting a whole 3D image of you, like a whole 3D image of you that they can then scan into a computer if they want. And, you know, coupling that with like VR technology, I don't know if you've ever checked out the deep fake technology where they can actually, right? Um, all of these things are kind of leading into this same matrix bubble, obviously. Uh, all the different technologies are. And they're rolling it out piece by piece in different places in the world. That's why every country seems to be a little bit different. Um, obviously the big stage is, is the United States with all of the riots and everything else that they've, they've done there. And then you've got like countries like Sweden where they're showing you what apathy looks like. And then you've got countries like North Korea where they're showing you what absence looks like. And then they, you know, um, the tragedies in, in like say Spain and in Italy and then in China, how they've now basically redesigned their whole country after all of this with nobody paying attention and the 5G technology playing into that because there's a whole lot of automated systems that come into play with all of this stuff, right? Mm -hmm. um, if they don't want us going out, they know that they still need to deliver stuff to us. So they still need our data for that reason to you know, get us our food, get us our medicine, get us our whatever, and then have it delivered to us. So the automated systems that 
all of that will run on is what 5G is all about and what um, rolling it out on mass as they did was all about when they did it. And it's like anything else. And, you know, you can look back through history and find out that when we introduced radio waves, people got sick. When we introduced like everything, we, we get sick because it's, it's a change in our environment. And that's the way our bodies work. And if you don't adapt, then you mutate. And that's what happens. So that's, that's what we have to deal with it. And um, yeah, I guess watching the changes as they roll them out in different places has been pretty interesting because it's uh, again it's the same way that i look at the technology and you know i don't just look at what boston dynamics or d-wave are doing i look at how they fit together right mm -hmm. so when i'm looking around at how all these countries are dealing with this right now this lockdown and the slight differences from country to country or even state to state or province to province in our case i see them as like just different variations of the same test so that they can go this works <laughs> and it, that'll just be blanket for everybody and that's what this one world government one world religion one world everything is all about that's what one world at home right that's a, that's literally what they're calling it so we're, we're just feeding them all the data that they need on both sides because i mean even on the more positive side the people who want to help and create a change they're kind of like being overly vocal and overly aggressive and violent in their delivery and and whatnot right and and that focus on you know meeting violence with violence mm -hmm. is is really 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 infecting things and that's also part of their agenda right they would they want us to fight back because that's what's ultimately going to lead to being able to lock us down by force right um covid they thought you know if they took all of our freedoms away we would freak out we would fight back we didn't yeah, yeah, we right. Didn't. It was right? so interesting to watch right they're like but right. these people are way more passive than even we thought right. <laughs> <laughs> and then and then the riots and they're like okay this will do it and then it didn't still and so now i think they're like well fuck i think we already got them <laughs> I, I don't think we have to you know I think we can just tell them to stay home and they'll do it. Yeah. So we'll, again, see how it all rolls out, but they've definitely done a, you know, I, I said early on that like, as much as I don't like the plan, it is pretty brilliant. And I do admire the uh, attention to detail and anticipation of human psychology that they've put into it all. And unfortunately they've been right, you know, in, in terms of how we would react and, and how we would deal with it. And, um, you know, that's why I've been kind of so outspoken about like the hopium programs and stuff these days is because, you know, those same groups going back 200 years ago when they could have told us all of this the first time decided not to. <laughs> and, and now we're just kind of trusting that they're going to all of a sudden. No, they're, they're not going to. This is just a repeat of the same cycle. And, you know, we really have to make sure that we don't become our own worst enemy. Mm -hmm. because that's that's what they want us to do so yeah a couple of things you said a lot of stuff there and you know me my mind's like oh i want to talk about this i want to talk about that i'm trying to keep up with all of them but first of all i think that um the point like these lockdowns are going to keep, keep coming in waves and waves until what we think we, we think may be the the real purpose or the real event which may not actually be one thing it may just be like oh we like remember when we were little in school we had fire drills right and they did that so that when the fire came we already knew what to do like we had enough practice so that's the whole thing like they can just say at five o'clock friday night we're on lockdown as of 10 o'clock tonight and everybody in lockstep knows what that means and they don't it's, it's not messy anymore so they're running yeah. us through a couple of versions of it right kind of thing so i think that i do think what you said is incredibly important we're seeing two sets of things amongst the people that want to help and be and be helpful right we're seeing the, the hopium stuff, right? Like we're seeing like all the ridiculous hopium QAnon, <laughs> QAnon kind of stuff, right? Which is, I think, I think people have failed to realize how actually damaging that the QAnon thing has been to the um, value base, the moral base of the quote unquote truth movement right like it really has done damage on on a lot of levels that people don't want to see because they were like well so many people know about it so so many more people have truth now or an awake and whatever but like 
it really has done um, it has done damage that I think people can't see. You know what I mean? And, and and so I have a lot of concerns about that. But then there's been this other thing with people who have been militant or violent in their resistance to this thing where they've created kind of a new like a new tyrannical freedom or something like that right like where they have got like they have got a group of followers right that they've created a group around where it's like they they say that they're, they're for freedom but if you don't agree with them or you talk about something that they think is stupid or or whatever then like the hammer comes down on you the same way the hammer comes down on you if you go against the government Right, yeah. <laughs> like little cults, you know what I mean, that have popped up during this period of time, and it's like a weird phenomenon where, like, yeah, okay, like everything a cult leader saying is true, but there's something like horribly uh, icky or uncomfortable about like the way it's all being deployed, right? Yeah. That is just like, what is this? It's like a tyrannical freedom or something, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like right. kind of. Well, it's a per basic perversion of morality that they do anytime like that's like the whole black Ma lives matter thing is right like yeah they're, they're black lives matter but did we need to turn it into what we turned it into probably not right and, and who who benefits from that oh yeah all the people who've made black lives not matter <laughs> are the ones benefiting from that so yeah. you know it's it's one of those things where and that's you know, it's something I, I've tried to warn about for a long time is they, they use our better nature against us. You know, like they, as people like us who we've been, like we talked about it right off the top, they, they, they focus on your gifts and they focus on the stuff that they, you like and they feed you that stuff mm -hmm. so that you'll also feed them this stuff, right? And it's, they, they still get what they want out of you by giving you what you want. And that's the way society has been working for a really long time. It's like, here's your dangling carrot. Okay, follow it, right? And, and now it's like, they've convinced a bunch of different groups to want a different vegetable dangling at the end of that. Right. Yeah. But they're all still chasing, right. They're all still following the string with whatever's on the end of the string, not realizing that that's what they're doing. And it's, it's disappointing, but I, I get why it works is because we, we are good people. We do want to see things change and we do want to see better. So of course, when we hear something like, um, Trump's organizing the release of 400,000 children from, no, the man's been putting children in there. Like his entire empire is built on the exact same foundation that keeps children in those things. Stop, stop yourself, <laughs> you know, bring it back and think about it. But you now it's the frequencies in the way that they are. If we're going to talk about things just pure ener energetically, I totally get why people are all over the map because the frequencies are all over the map. And going back to what I was saying about like my daily practices, it's all about balancing. It's all about trying to maintain that within myself so that I can maintain it for other people so that I can maintain it for my, for my environment. And that's, you know, really all we can do right now. We can't go march with guns against the white house right now. We're, we're not going to, we're not going to win that war We're you know, we can't just sit back and, drink beer with, with rifles on our front lawn and, and shoot anybody who comes near. Like these things aren't going to work. That's what got us into this mess in the first place. So um, I just, I, I don't even really know where I'm going with that, to be honest. I just, <laughs> in a strange mosaic. It doesn't have to be linear. Nothing is anyway. So, yeah. so I also wanted to say, just bumping back for a second to like the social distancing thing. Um, one of the other things that I think people, because everyone thinks about facial recognition software, but I know that these biometric things also look at things like people's gait, right? Like, and, and, and whatnot. And so, like, again, like being able to have people a little distanced while they're focusing in on that to grab signatures of people's gait makes it easier to measure that. So that's part of why this has been, I think, you know, like deployed the way it has, right? So that, the other thing is, you guys refer to this like a little bit, like, when you were talking with Jerry and Nish, but the like frequencies on earth are changing. Some are natural, some are by this 5G thing. And then, and then there's some phenomena that happen where like the two of the, the things come together, you know, like two, three levels, two levels, four levels, you know, the, it's many things that's creating the situation. But I think one of the things that's been happening, and I've talked about this a little bit, but I'm curious to know your take on this because I, I, it's kind of interesting to sort of talk 
Like after listening to you, I was like, wow, his mind does some, a similar thing that mine does. And so it's kind of like talking to myself, but through a person who expresses it much differently. You know what I mean? That <clears throat> what, one of the things that could possibly have been an unknown to them that they didn't know it was going to happen or that they, they knew it was going to happen, it could be either way, is that one of the side effects of 5G, when they start to put it, roll it out in mass, is that it also creates telepathy between people in a way that they weren't quite expecting. And mm -hmm. so it creates like uh, like bump technology they used to have on cell phones, right? Mm -hmm. Where you're standing within a certain proximity, like the other person's like personal Akashic record or their, you know, files are like, let's remember when they used to have LAN parties when music file sharing first came out. Yeah. And, software yeah. sharing. And, and so like either they didn't quite expect that it would be that way right and, and so that was like okay they started putting the 5g things up and they're like shit how do like we want to deploy it more massively but how do we make sure that we're not there there's all, not all this information sharing going on that we're not in control of right okay social distancing right like we already know it's safe for people who live in the same house and are part of the same social structure they can be close to each other but we don't want unknowns near other unknowns because that's where like whoa this set of people have one set of knowledge the other set have the other set of knowledge and suddenly they're going to be able to read each other's files and figure out shit that like we would rather them not know about each yeah. other and this could go as simple as to like people being able to understand each other culturally right to something simple like that or the, or it could be as much as like if i've been standing three feet from you suddenly the answers that i haven't been able to put together about my past and my project programming and same with yours suddenly something locks in and we have the key and we didn't even have to have a conversation about it right yeah. And so I think there's that aspect of it, um, or that they knew it, that they knew that that was going to be, that that was going to happen, and they were afraid that people aren't ready for that. And so by making there be less people out in public spaces at a time, right, then, you know, it's kind of a slow, you know, like a, a slow roll into it, like giving people a, a time to adapt. And of course, they don't care because their systems have ways of grabbing onto all of it and recording the information. It could be either one, right? Yeah. The interactions. So what do you think about that? Have you, is that, is that part of this? I, I really think it is. Yeah, it's uh, like they, they've, part of what's going on, like in terms of what they've been pumping us full of metal for so long, all the nanobots that they've been putting in us, Mm -hmm. along with the technology like it's a, a kind of making us senders and receivers as a physical being right like as a like we're all towers like at this point radio, in time like piezo crystal radio kinds of exactly and what? because you know there's the personal side of us that's we're always that right like we that, that, that's always a reality sorry um they kind of wanted to be able to co-opt it as well so mm -hmm keeping us at a distance is, is making it so that we don't notice so much, you know, and then separating us first. So we're, we're not noticing that, that it is actually making us a little bit more free to use our tele telepathy, like our, our, our typical intuitions and stuff like that are all being heightened right now and they know it. So keeping us distance like that, we all start to feel more of the fear responses mm -hmm. as opposed to the, the love responses, right? Mm -hmm we're having a lot less interactions with each other. So we're not generating as much joy and gratitude and appreciation mm -hmm. We're we're separating from each other. So we're generating more fear and apprehension and, and, and more unknown. Um, so it's a kind of a, a bunch of things all at once. Our ability to, to do this has always been there and they've known it and they're now replacing that magic with the technology, mm -hmm. right? It's the same thing I've talked about in every other way. Um, for now, um, they're not using it in any type of nefarious way. They're just getting it set up. During this period of time, we are kind of unintentionally using it in the ways that you were rolling out. What eventually they can then do is, you know, help things move, like create a thought, like or broadcast a thought. Mm -hmm. And then every time you pass someone, they start picking up that thought too, right? or create a frequency, say fear frequency, and every time you do it. And we saw them rolling this out in technologies uh, like the bumping cell phones that you mentioned, um, Pokemon Go, and those different types of augmented reality games where you can actually see the other players in your, 
in your world and even little video games like i remember there was one called fable 3 where you could um add an overlay onto the world where you would see these little orbs flying around and those were other people playing the game on their own console who happened to be in the same area as you and you could just see that they were there almost like voyeuristically yeah. you know you couldn't really interact with them other than to maybe trade stuff if you were on friends lists together right. um right and this is it funny to me because as i'm watching all this i'm like i i'm seeing that's what they're doing with society right now um i was watching the movie bird box uh which you know was the uh, a big predictive programming for what's going on right now because it was really popular really pushed through netflix and everybody not everybody but you know er everybody watched it it's about more or less I, i think i didn't end up watching the end of it but i think it's like a a demon or some type of alien um insurgents on the planet where if they if you see it then they can change what you see and actually make you go crazy and so like uh, you people would have to wear blindfolds all the time instead of face masks they were, they were all wearing blindfolds in order to go outside and once you're inside then you can take your blindfold off but when you go <laughs> but when, it was just so much of that even though the, the, the difference was different like it obviously you're not catching a virus you're you're catching a virus through your eyes instead of through your lungs so, but that's really the only difference and if you take that difference away and watch that movie again and take some of the like supernatural elements out of it, replace that with natural elements like military governments, things like that, you'll see how that movie was just predictive programming for exactly what's going on right now. Um, it, pretty much everything we've been pointing out for years, it's, it's all just fair game right now. Like that's, that's why they, they're throwing it all in our faces and being so blatant about it is because they can, because they gave us the chance to do something, at least in their mind, right? I'm speaking from their point of view. From their point of view, they gave us a chance to do something about it. We didn't. So what we've told them is, we'll just take it in the ass. You know, <laughs> no, just to, to use a very, you know, a vulgar metaphor. We'll, we'll just take it from them. And every little time they drop, like we were talking about earlier, a new test on us, we just take it. And yeah, they don't, they, they don't have to worry about us fighting back as much as they thought that they would. And that 5G technology in terms of um, broadcasting information from person to person, that can also be used to spread virus yeah. responses. It can also be used to make us sick. So, um, you know, part of it fitting into the trial run for whatever they're going to do next has been, you know, keeping us at this distance. The... The worst part about it in my mind uh, comes from, you know, what we should be naturally connecting with each other, right? We, we should be in close proximity to other humans. We should be hugging each other. We should be touching each other. We should be sharing stories. We should be doing these things. And we haven't been doing enough of that for so long that that's kind of where this illness in our planet comes from. And that's why we're so detached from each other. And now they're just making it so much worse. And, and at the same time, pushing all the morality behind that segregation and separation, like with Black Lives Matter and all of that, so that we're so confused. It's, it's literally like giving the entire planet Stockholm syndrome. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, so a couple of things you said, that there's, there's a lot to go there, but the thing you were saying about how, like, eventually it'll be like you can walk by someone and they're having a thought and it projects and goes into everyone else's thought and then you attach it later to like, okay, you can a virus. I, did, did you, you know, I, this comes, I, sometimes I feel like a fucking broken record with the fringe thing, but this is a different one I haven't talked about. But they really showed us like really all of the technologies that were available during that show and, and, and they've been deployed over time here and there, but there was the one episode, but then later he was back in the ser- a couple times with the similar kind of thing going on of this guy, I think his name was Nick in the show and he's someone who had been paired with Olivia and the projects as a kid, right? And Nick's gift was that he, like, whatever he was feeling, everybody else did. So at one point in the show, he's suicidal, and suddenly all the other people in the office are up on the roof with him also going to jump off, right? right? So that kind of thing, and I feel like that was stuff that was incredibly tested with us in little projects and programs, you know, like, when we, when we were kids, and also they've been observing as we've been walking around, you know, with the in the world and like my father always has called me hurricane emily right because if i come in and i'm upset or i'm happy or i'm whatever it is that's the takes over the whole house and that's what's going to be right 
So yeah. funny, he means it in a funny way, but there's also like, for as brain dead as my father pretends he is, he's very well clued in as to what's going on, you know, what, what has happened with me and, and whatnot. And he'll have these little offhand ways of constantly sort of reminding me that even though he pretends he doesn't know, he knows. <laughs> right? I'm sure you're familiar with this phenomenon. <laughs> right? Yep. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. So this now, of course, but, a lot, but so much of this series of exercises we've been through really obviously since the Kennedy assassination, at least, but like certainly in the last 20 years has been the, um, the deployment of MKUltra on a massive scale so that it's affecting everyone all the time completely. Not that it didn't before, right? Not because you can't, you can't really like do something we're like as as you've talked about we're connected to each other and we're connected to the earth so you can't actually do something with a small group of people and not have it in any way affect the collective and affects the environment and all of that kind of stuff but there was an attempt to sort of compartmentalize things and have any connection that it had to the outer world be very like undercover, right? Very underground or not able to see. And now they just don't bother with any of that stuff anymore. It's like, yeah, this is what we're doing. We're doing it to everyone all the time. We don't yeah. care to see, blah, blah, blah. But yes, yeah, so that, that this, and I think so much of this thing, whatever there is that is a real virus, this is a fucking mind virus. Like, my, like people, I know people that are just fucking crazy with this stuff, right? Yeah. Like, it can't be, I know people who have all the, in, like, education and intellect to be able to understand what this is and what this isn't, but they're still but like, yeah, but we just don't know for sure. So we better do this ridiculous thing. It actually doesn't make sense anyway. It makes us sick, but we're going to get ourselves sick in the hope of not getting sick. Right. Like, <laughs> like that the mind control has been that successful and that's the yeah. real virus. And it's not even just with the virus. Like these frequencies are ramped up in such ways that people are just making fucking decisions you know what I mean like people are going like hard in the paint on their own delusions if that's where they were right like if, if people were in a spot where you know they were confused and everything wasn't making sense and they were kind of creating their own narrative based on that confusion then all this did was ramp that up and they're in full fucking delusion at this, at this point right and yeah. I'm seeing that or people who are choosing fear and just like you know cutting all their friends off and, and not like you know or uh, fighting against anyone who doesn't fit their mold and like, oh, you're not wearing a mask. We can't be friends anymore. How dare you not post because Black Lives Matter. That's it. Blocked. You know, like there's so much of this kind of stuff going on. Relationships breaking up. Yeah. Kids running away from home. Like there's, and it's, it's, it's all because of this happening. And, you know, it started as a natural progression for the planet. It happens all the time now they've kind of co-opted it and they're using it to their advantage and like it's almost like turning up dials on us where it's like it could be this bad but we're going to make it that bad and <laughs> and so what i wanted to something that i thought of while you we were talking there was you know, i mentioned project blue beam technology earlier but the way that we're all being coming wired to 5g they can make project blue beam work within our own minds like they can they can make you see things that are just not there and that's why i brought up bird box as well because that's kind of the the, the thing of that movie is they they you know they see whatever it is and then they go into this delusion mode and that's also what's going on with a lot of people like some people are just like falling into these traps where they like they believe things happened that didn't it's like a induced mandala effect it's really kind of gross and mm -hmm. um you know it's it's partially partially we're doing it to ourselves because we're not stopping it right and i'm i'm one of those people who believes a lot in personal responsibility if you're not changing something you're choosing something but at the same time i also have to respect that you know frequencies are what they are and we are affected by them but it's just that's just going to get worse right and if if we don't manage to deal with it then they are going to have us you know controlled like puppets like literal physical puppets by that point <sighs> well i think that, but you and i have been dealing with that for a long time right like so the whole thing like a lot of this when we talk about projects and programs like i'm well aware that 
a lot of the things that I think are my memories are, are like, they're, they're, they're simulations, right? Like, but that, and this is where I think our community sometimes gets caught up, right? And I was able to like, I think this became really clear to me when I like, you know, saw, when I met or talked to Andrew Bashago and we grew up in the same place and were exposed to the same sets of things and he thinks he's been to Mars and I think I've been in a mind control program. Like, right? <laughs> yeah. We went, literally, we were at all of the same places. Now he's older than me, so he was there ten or fifteen years before. But like, they're j these are things that they're you know updating. They're updating the technologies associated with them, but they're basically running the similar kinds of things in the similar locations for at least long periods of time, right? So, yeah. you know, like I was like, there was enough similarities between like my my memories of things and what he was reporting. But for me, it felt like it was all very um, technological in nature, right? And that it was something that occurred, like, even though I went to a place a lot, a lot of times where it happened, where it was really happening was in my mind. I wasn't ever leaving the base, right? Yeah. There was space in my mind, the, the secret space, <laughs> the secret is, yeah. right? You know, so yeah. secret space is in your mind, the secret is there's no space, it's a program, right? Like all this kind of stuff. It was occurring in the same locations in Chatsworth that he spent time as a kid and then later developed this idea that he was going to space through someplace over by down on, you know, by the airport in Los Angeles and, and whatever. But the way he describes how he got to space was the same like technique technique that I thought they were using on me. But it became very clear to me that, oh, it's like what they're showing me in my head. So that like, the, to me, the whole thing, the secret space program is the is the same thing as the brain mapping program, right? It's like a hyper space exploration. Like they're trying to understand the dimensional realms that occur both within and without because they mirror each other, but it's easy yeah. to measure them inside someone's mind because that's an obvious contained space, whereas the external doesn't, isn't so obvious. And so to me, it was like, okay, so like it isn't that that's not real because the inside is just a microcosm of the outer thing. But like, yeah. I'm very, very clear that 90% of what went on with me was something that was going on inside of my own head, right? Mm -hmm. Like whether, you know, that, that doesn't make it any less real, right? In terms of like, that is still a mind control program, right? So even, you know, like it's, I think we get hung up because people are looking for all of this proof or evidence or all of this external real world thing. If somebody wants, if whether something happens to you or somebody wants you to believe something happens to you, that is both things are still controlled. You know what I mean? And I think that people get really upset when I, when something like that is said, but it seems to me that you've always understood that and you have come to a level of peace with that, which is also what I have that is making us able to navigate some of what's going on right now a little bit better. And this whole thing with the Mandela effect that you referred to, like, you know, there's a truth to it, right? But then there's also this thing that is exactly what you're saying, right? Like that people are thinking that there, it isn't necessarily a missed memory. They want people to think that, oh, you're just remembering wrong. It's not really that. It's just, no, that experience was just provided for you. So there's no way anybody else could remember that same thing, yeah. which is different than, than it changed, right? Yeah. But I think at least, you know, I, I'm just going to assume that you've been experiencing reality for a long time in a similar way that I have is that you constantly had to manage like the difference between actual reality, shared reality, and personal reality in a way that like you had to recognize the difference, and the slight difference, because it's slight at this point in energy signature between the different things. Yeah. Well, I was like, I was lucky, I guess you could say, in that they were always really clear with me when I would come out of a simulation that that was a simulation. They didn't play that game where they wanted me to believe it because they were trying to teach me how it all worked, right? So I needed to be able to know those differences. And part of knowing those differences was being told what the differences were so that you could be like, oh, okay, this was what's different. It's like the movie Inception, how they have the totems, right? Like you, you get used to the way that that feels. And, oh, it feels different here. This isn't the same spot. I was trained for that specifically because I was it, I have a lot of empathy or compassion for people when they can't make the, the distinction between the two. But I also feel like I need to speak out about it because 
especially within our community and especially with what I was talking about earlier, like they're, they're making us demonize ourselves. Mm -hmm. They're really screwing us out. Like I had Vice um, reach out to me through two different sources. They had reached out to me directly and I had said no. And then some other person contacted me and I actually did have the conversation with him. He doesn't know that I already said no to them directly. <laughs> He's going to find that out. But, um, and, you know, it, it's, they're trying to make us look crazy. They're trying to make all of this look crazy. And vehicles to do that are the Secret Space Program, QAnon, mm -hmm. all these big memes that are going through the Project Pegasus. Like, people look into what Pegasus was, okay? Just go back and find out what Pegasus actually was. Once you figure that out, take that in mind and then look at the fact that this was allegedly a program sending people to the future and to Mars and to whatnot. No, it wasn't. It was a simulation program. They got really good at it. Andrew, bless his heart, his generation was where they figured it out so that they could use it against ours. Yeah. Right. And, and that's an unfortunate reality. And that doesn't take anything away from him as a person or the story in and of itself, other than the details of visiting other planets and whatnot. I think um, one of the few things I can say, like, I think he's 100% telling the truth as he feels he experienced it. I don't think he's lying. I don't think he's exaggerating. I don't think he's making anything up. I don't, I, I don't. I spent four hours talking to him. And, like if there was something suspicious about a person, it would have reared its head in four hours. Right, yes. like a half hour conversation or whatever, maybe not, but four hours, right? You know, two hours on record on the recording and two hours off the recording. And, um, and all he's missing is the part where they woke him up at the end and, and right. you know, and, and let him know that that wasn't really what he did, that he's really just been in this chair the whole time. So That's is, what he didn't have. So like I, he got woken up in his bed the next day thinking that he just got set back, right? Okay, and so that's, that's how it worked. This is where it's interesting though, right? So a couple of things. First of all, in his generation, based on his age, going to space was a major accomplishment, right? Like they just, so this was something that was deeply embedded as very important um, in, in that generation. And so his attachment to the idea that he could somehow be involved in that, you know what I mean? I think, so, so that's something that would have been more, someone in that generation would have been more susceptible than you or I, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay, so he's about 10 years older than me, I think. I'm not sure how old you are, but I do think I'm a little bit older than you. So, okay. So I think that by the time whatever was happening with me was happening, like it's sort of halfway between where he is. You had, and obviously we're, we're each in slightly different programs because all the programs are personal. There's no one run of the mill thing like there was back in the 50s for, for Duncan or in the 60s for, yeah, or whatever, 60s or whatever it was for. Okay you know, Dave or Duncan or Elisa, or it's different as, as, it, as it's gone on, it's become more individualized, and more personal, right? But so I have, I don't have any memory of them saying, always being clear to me, this is reality, this is fake, you need to know the difference, like, like where they were telling me like you did. But I do remember being trained to know the difference between when something's real and when something's not. And I also remember being trained how to control my breath so that I can't don't alert certain other things to the fact that like maybe I'm a visitor in something that isn't quite, re you know what I mean? Like, like my own body can, right? So I have like, you know, like, and so for you, you're like, you were aware they were telling you all the long, along and you remember being told, right? For me, it feels like a more like maybe they were telling me all along, but I don't necessarily remember being told. Right, but I seem to have some of that ability to discern between the various layers of this. So maybe at a certain with him, they weren't telling him anything. They were just doing the shit where it's like you wake up in your bed the next morning, right? For me, they were experimenting with like letting me know certain things because you need to be able to control yourself in certain different kinds of environments based on how real or not real they are, right? Like the way you would control your endocrine system and your exertion of energy in a completely natural environment is different than in a one that would be simulated. Yeah. Right. So I remember various levels of training for that. So some of this could just be generational, like in nature. Yeah. Right. And then it's just the attachment to it. Right. Because 
when he was a kid, everything was more real than it is now. There wasn't all this virtual shit, except for when he would be, all that stuff already existed in the base in Chatsworth, right? Yeah. Kind of yeah. like the reality that he was, a, <clears throat> that he had like emotional community memory of or whatever. It was a different kind of place than, than we are. You know what yeah. I mean? So I think with each successive generation, there becomes more layers for them to have to deal with both in their waking and in their programmed life. Does that, do you think that could possibly explain some of it too? Absolutely, it does. It's a, they're, they're constantly upgrading. That's why it's all about testing it, right? And to constantly upgrade it so that eventually they can roll it out on the general public en masse. Like that's what this has all been about, right? Is to figure out the best ways to do all of these things so that they can use it globally. And therefore, you know, and I, I've experienced the same thing you're saying between you and Ann and Drew, and there's a, the same thing between you and I, and then myself and, and someone younger than me, I've noticed the same thing where it's like, okay, they've been exposed to a different version of the same technology. It's like if you take um, mind control indoctrination from a clockwork orange, and then take it from the movie Divergent, right? They're two different versions of the same thing, but they are the same thing. And it's just an advancement in the technology and more potency in its ability to actually confuse and manipulate people. Just like so, when they update your apps on your phone or whatever, or when they roll out the new operating system, it does most of the same things, but it does it a little differently. And there's a new feature or two that weren't there before that you, if you that that the other person who was never exposed to it would have a hard time understanding. Yeah, the same way they show us in the movies, like Terminator movies, how like each new Terminator is just a slight upgrade from the last one or they're like, oh, okay, this worked really last well with the last one. So that, let's, let's take that and add this because they both work so well. Like the newest one is actually like Arnie's metal one with the T2 liquid metal one. So they, they just put the two together and now it can separate and it can do two different things. So that's more or less how they've been advancing these technologies is as they use them and they find successes and they find flaws, they take the flaws out and they couple the successes. And, you know, now it's at a point in time that was a lot of right when I was writing the blog, what I was aware of them doing, closing a lot of these programs because they have all this technology ready to start rolling out on the general public. And that's why like people like you and I had no reaction to them turning on 5G on the surface because we grew up around it, right? <laughs> we were already acclimatized to it. Now that it's on the surface, these people aren't. So they're, it, they're reacting to it. And, well, you just made um, an interesting thought. So I want to talk about 5G in relation to time control on the other side. Um, yeah, just, just the way you said that made me have an interesting thought. So, all right, I think this is like a good place for us to sort of end this segment and move over into the patron section. I, I, I want to get into a couple of interesting things a little bit more related to some of these personalized programs in the second hour. And then I also, there's a few threads here we didn't quite tie together. I want to do that. And then I also want to talk to you about the larger symbolic meaning of the meme that has been propagated through every operation we've seen this year. And that is that of I can't breathe. Right. So I think we're going to get into that uh, over on the Patreon side. You can join us at uh, patreon.com forward slash off planet media for that. But before we hop off the public hour, Shane, tell people where they can find your work. Uh, the Ruiner author on YouTube is pretty much where I do most of it. Uh, I don't even remember the, the the thing for the blog, but if you just put the Ruiner blog in Google, you'll find it. And that, that's pretty much all I've been doing other than uh, talking with people like you on various interviews. All right. Awesome. Cool. Guys, we'll see you on the other side. We'll be back in just a minute.